naive base tends to be baby's first spam classifier. That's the favorite example uh, in machine learning courses when you make the first spam classifier. And it's naive in the sense that it says my features have nothing to do with any of my other features. The presence of the word free has nothing to do with the presence of the word shipping. Now that's a little naive. We know that there might be some relationship between those words. And we know that if we were trying to model the universe carefully, if that were our goal, this would probably be a bad fit. However, we're trying to get the thing to work. And it might just work even if it's naive. So maybe we'll just try it anyway and see how it performs, where it's making these clearly ludicrous assumptions fine. So what's great about this thing is that it is going to use these elementary operations. And the way that these are all composed in a formula, I have a little link down there for you in the slides, really an undergraduate on their first day of a probability course learns all the components that you can do to put this formula together. So if an undergraduate student can do that on the first day, with no background at all, it's not anything too deep. It's just composing what we had before and using some uh, simple straightforward manipulations which you can find in the link. Same principle though, counting, multiplying, dividing, Ignoring, that's it, nothing else. And finally, when it's done, you interpret the results as given all this evidence that you've put in that treats all the evidence as completely independent from all the bits of evidence completely independent from one another. What's the probability that I have? A cat versus a not cat. And then you can either output the label that is most likely or you can jump for joy that you're dealing with probability outputs because now instead of just simply getting the flat label, you can say, hey thing, how sure are you? If you're saying some number that's too close to 50, maybe you don't know what you're talking about, and maybe I prefer not to listen to you, maybe I prefer to send this to some other process, maybe have a human look at it and make the judgment call. Whereas if the number is uh, very close to 100% or zero, then I can go with what the system is saying. So, naive base, when are you gonna try it first? If you have category labels, and if you have category features, like text, for example. Now, having category features is no sweat. It's very easy to turn your continuous features into categorical ones. You have measured all kinds of things about my torso, length and width and whatever. Well, you can turn that into small, medium, large with no problem going from the category in the opposite direction, that's the hard one. So you can always turn your features into categories. When there are many features, this is a great idea. This handles a lot of features. And with text, the way that data actually tends to be encoded is you have all the possible words that one could meet in an email, and you are asking present or absent, or how many times present, how many times absent. So you have a bunch of zeros, we saw in this email no times the word hippopotamus and no times the word tiger and one time free and one time shipping. And so we have in that row counts of that sort. There's lots of features. This can handle that situation. And it's also great when you need your code to be simple. The operations are super simple. Now there's a naive version, this counts thing. There's also a less naive base. And that one involves crazy cool things like likelihood function, priors. Warning here, now this is harder, but it is so cool. And if you're not careful, you will really fall in love with things. And then like me, you might sink several years of your life into this. So watch out, maybe don't flirt with it too much if you, if you don't wanna fall for it.